Eastern Roman Emperor Anastasius I and Ostrogothic King Theodoric the Great tried to be the successors of the Roman Empire. They had powerful empires and tried to increase their influence. However, they clashed over various issues. In 493, the Ostrogothic King Odoacer lost and was killed against Theodoric. Anastasius did not recognize Theodoric due to the continuation of his predecessor, Zeno's policy, and the fear of Theodoric's powerful army. In 497, Pope Anastasius II accepted Acacius' supporters, and both sides worked on being faithful to the Henotikon. Anastasius agreed in the next year. According to the anonymous Valesianus, the last consul of the Western Roman Empire, Festus, headed to Constantinople to get the imperial purple robe from Anastasius. Theodoric did not have to go to Constantinople, and possibly received imperial trappings from 476 on the Romulus Augustus. The evidence came from the chronicler Cassiodorus, implying an imperial purple robe. Theodoric wanted to emulate the Eastern Roman style government from Constantinople. Like Anastasius, he tried to increase power and influence with the Western Germanic tribes. He used marriage alliances and went to war against the Franks. In 506, he had a conflict with the Franks, but made peace with the Visigoths, Vandals, and Burgundians. Two years later, Merovingian king Clovis became consul and gained the imperial purple from Anastasius. It was a means to check Theodoric's increasing power. Also, Anastasius maintained friendly relations with the Burgundians. His subjects followed Roman law and became more Roman to have recognition as the successor to the Western Roman Empire. He kept the elements of the former Roman Republic, the Senate. Theodoric viewed Anastasius as the senior power and the emperor of the Roman Empire. In 504, Theodoric attacked the Eastern Roman ally in Sirmium, the Gepids. In response, Anastasius dispatched Savinus, the Magister Militum of Illyricum, and 10,000 Bulgars to siege the freebooters. the Hun contacted Theodoric's general, Pitsias, and gained his support and 2,500 troops. At the Battle of Berea Merg, the Ostrogoths won. From 508 to 512, there was peace in the Balkans. The Ostrogoths gained western Pannonia, and the eastern Romans retained eastern Pannonia with the city of Basanae and viewed it as a defeat due to not having Sirmium. This view came from Procopius of Caesarea, and the French historian Ernst Stein corroborated it. However, there was no evidence of Mundo or Theodoric getting Dacia. In 508, the Eastern Roman fleet raided Apulia in response to Theodoric's maneuver against the Frankish king, Clovis, an ally of Anastasius. The emperor dispatched 200 ships carrying 8,000 troops under Counts of Romanus and Rufinus. In Apulia, they utilized scorched earth tactics and attacked another city, Saponta. It gained two years of tax exemption. In addition, they fixed some harbors. The effect for the Ostrogoths was the building of its navy. The chronicler Marcellinus took an anti Anastasian view due to opposing his religious policy and being a Miaphysite. Marcellinus was a Chalcedonian Christian. In 510, Theodoric wrote a letter to Anastasius. The tone was possibly polite, but diplomatic. The Ostrogothic kingdom was to be the new Western Roman Empire and submitted to the Eastern Roman Empire as the senior Roman power. Also, he put the Gallo-Roman consul 460 under Western Roman Emperor Majorian's reign, Felix, to be the great, or Magnus, for his effectiveness and need to have a triumph. While Anastasius' feelings were unclear, he was probably reluctant due to his hostility for Theodoric attacking Clovis. The Eastern Roman and possibly Gothic chronicler and politician, Mordanus, wrote a book, Romana. He 
He viewed Theodoric to be better than Anastasius. He put Theodoric and Vitalianus as Gothic consuls, and Vitalianus served under Anastasius. Their motive was to make Theodoric pro-republic and paint Anastasius as anti-republic. Theodoric's view of the Cassian Schism was unknown. It was the dispute over favoring Miaphysitism under Emperor Zeno's reign after 484 and the failure to compromise over the decisions of the Council of Chalcedon. After the death of Pope Anastasius II, there were two candidates, Lamentius and Symmachus. He swayed based on the prevailing power, going from Symmachus to Lamentius and back to Symmachus. Emperor Anastasius I favored Lamentius for his pro henity composition and not Symmachus for being anti henity con. In the end, Symmachus won. In 499, there was a synod in Rome. There were about 200 attendees, and they praised Theodoric 30 times, Pope Symmachus 20 times, and none for Anastasius. To make matters worse, Symmachus and Anastasius could not resolve the Acacian Schism. The relations between Anastasius I and Theodoric the Great were uneasy. Both sides tried to increase their power and influence on other Germanic tribes as the successor of the Roman Empire. On the religious front, it did not favor Anastasius due to his disagreement with Symmachus and continued under his successor, Pope Hormistas, and ended under Emperor Justin I. Concisely, the two powers had their suspicions and never fully trusted each other.